Welcome everybody to Romantic Tarot from Born Without Boundaries. Welcome to Born Without Boundaries. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. Let's help the channel grow. Let's just keep it going. If you really love this video, then like it and show your love by sharing it anywhere you want to share it. Facebook, Twitter, here in your, um, on your um, like uh, comments feed, whatever. What is that called? Community feed, wherever. I, I would appreciate it, whatever. Wherever you want to share it, that would be wonderful. Anyway, welcome. This is the Romantic Tarot. Uh, on the YouTube side, this is two-part part reading every week. Uh, and this is for energy starting next weekend into the week after. If you're looking for energies this weekend, go check out the one that I, that I did last week. Um, the Romantic Tarot has its own playlist. Uh, maybe I can attach it above head and see where that is. Um, but there's a whole playlist for Romantic Tarot if you're curious. So... Um, over here, we're going to do the romantic tarot messages, general messages for couples and for singles of what you can expect coming at you or happening in your love life um, for each zodiac sign. And then over on the extended, and that link is below, you can find it in the description box. I'll go into a little bit more into depth as to who exactly is coming towards you and the character of that person and maybe some insights into um, what's going on emotionally inside of them, what may be causing some issues or or could give you some insights in the upper hand, stuff like, stuff like that, just who is coming towards you and what makes them tick. Uh, anyway, let's get right into it. I have pre-shuffled and meditated on these cards. It took me about... 40 minutes to do, but they're all completed and ready. So we're just going to start at Scorpio. Let's start at 150 with Scorpio. And let's get right into the reading. So Scorpio, messages coming toward you, like messages for you, for love and romance, for this coming week. Here we go. Adjustments are required. It's really interesting. Now, the reason I'm meditating a little bit more on this is because so this is the third quarter moon. What that means is this is a waning gibbous. Okay? And what that means is yes, it still looks pretty full. It still looks like there's a lot there. But simultaneously, something seems to be fading. Now that could be your sexual chemistry. It could be your um, compatibilities. There could have been a lot of changes. It could be your financial stability. Something is waning and causing the relationship to not have as much fervor or passion as it used to. Now, symptoms of this could be you noticing you getting emotionally close to somebody outside of the relationship. I'm not saying that there's been cheating going on, but there might be, for you or your partner, emotional closeness starting to develop outside of the relationship. There might be, um, um, like you notice your eye is straying more or you don't mind your partner being gone as long or as much, or you don't enjoy their company as much as you used to. And this could be vice versa. So there is something here that there's, it's still full, but it's, 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 on, it's, it's on its downside. It doesn't need to be anything horribly negative happening, Scorpio, but there's just this energy of something losing its hold. Now, if you're not in a relationship, it could be just you emotionally shifting. And there has been huge shifts, especially for water signs in Pisces season, huge shifts that are, that have come and sort of changed what we're willing to tolerate and what we want in our lives. And we're allowing those things we thought we'd never let go of to slip through our fingers. Maybe so we don't have to acknowledge that we're letting them go. Cause if we acknowledged it, or if we told ourselves time to let go, we cling on tighter, but simply because we don't mind that it's leaving. There's something about us that's ready to change, to shift our attention, to shift our focus, to shift what we want. The grip isn't as tight. Now, it could just be that your grip isn't as tight. You're loosening your grip. Maybe because you've gotten to, maybe you've gotten closer to your partner or you've gotten to trust your partner more. And so um, 
you've gotten to trust your partner more, which is really beautiful. What I'm saying is there is a shift. There is this loosening up of what you had held on to before that made you feel secure. Your security is changing. What you want or what you need in a relationship is changing. It's all shifting. And I will say this, it is for the better because you feel comfortable with it. There is a level of comfort and I'm okay. This has to change. This has to leave. And a few weeks ago, I did a huge reading for you. By the way, Scorpio, your reading is coming up tomorrow. Um, but I did a huge reading and it was last week where it's just basically you're, you're letting it burn or you're setting the torch yourself. Why? Because you're prepared. This isn't just accidental. This isn't just something that's maybe kind of sort of happening to Scorpio right now. No, mentally you are ready for this shift. And I would say spiritually, especially you are driving this shift. So as something, if something feels like it's slipping through your fingers or if something feels like it's, it's numbing and it's not as big, like it's not as intense as it used to be. Like I said, that could be very, very good. You know, it could be anger dying down or um, hurt dying down. Like it doesn't have the hold over you that it used to. Um, but it could also mean that the person who did that to you doesn't mean as much as they used to. And you know what? That's okay. Especially when it comes to those heavy feelings or those very high energy but hurtful feelings like anger and pain and suffering. Who wants to be there forever? Like if it, if the burning burns it out and makes it start over, why not let it? And I feel like that's the letting that you're letting happen is you're letting things shift and you're letting things change and you're letting those things that do not serve you leave you, including maybe thoughts, maybe concerns, maybe concerns with your partner or holding on to, you know, if you were afraid to commit, letting it go, letting it, letting it drift away. There's no fear. There's a lack of fear. So especially things like hurt and suffering and fear are waning right now, Scorpio. And you're going to you're gonna be able to lighten, lighten your load and feel a lot better when it comes to where you stand right now, whether in your relationship or just with love in general. Let's look. You've got two cards that came out. Have faith. Trust your faith, wait, trust your faith in this situation and then look to your inner strength. You are stronger than you realize. I honestly think that this, these two cards together mean either somebody's looking into you because they don't have faith in you or they see that your interest has waned and it's almost like they're paying more attention to you now because they see that your interest is waning or your interest is waning Um and you're starting to look outside of what you almost like look out your window more often. Like we discussed this. Um, yeah, this is definitely the energy of um, some sort of watchfulness, some sort of I spy with my little eye, some sort of um, maybe spying. Not, no, not stalking. That's such a stupid word. People use it way too much. It's not stalking unless there's intent to do harm, right? So even when we look on somebody's Facebook page, we may look on it every day, but honestly, that still just falls into the realm of admiration, maybe a little bit of, of obsession, but it's not stalking. Um, but there's definitely sort of um, looking outside of what you used to have um, or looking outside of what you used to want, looking for something else, right? Having lost faith or lost connection um, with what you have, or even if that means that things got too heavy because they were too bad. And like those, those bad, it could be good because it could be, mean that those bad feelings are starting to die down, right? And, and not have as much footing with you. You're having the strength to be curious and get comfortable with being curious, or you're starting to look elsewhere because you just, you don't have faith in the, your, the current situation anymore. You're, whatever is current, we used to have gravity with you is now been flipped upside down and it doesn't have gravity anymore. It doesn't have as much of an effect. You could be looking or watching to see if somebody was, you could have been watching to see if somebody was watching for you or looking for you or um, paying attention to you and now you just don't care. Um, you could be, you could be starting to, um, look at somebody else, right? And wonder what's this person like, you know, like 
just starting to gather information on them, just starting to wonder or inquire, you know, what's up, like they've caught your attention, but at the same time, you're not sure of them. So you want to remain kind of aloof and in the background. Um, whatever your circumstance is, there is definitely a faith in something has been compromised and curiosity in something else has been peaked. And I think a big part of this faith has shifted. The faith, the faith has shifted from outside of you to inside of you. That's really what I want you to see here. See, this person has faith in all the butterflies. Just let them carry you wherever they want. And you're like, no, um, the butterflies. I'm not letting anything carry me wherever I want. I'm going to have faith in myself. I'm going to look into the mirror. I'm going to look inside of me and I'm going to find the things that make me happy. And that's a much stronger place to be than put placing faith outside of yourself. You are finding that you are all you need when you, how far you've come. That's what she's looking at almost like memories of herself. So, um, how far you come is really helping you to go a really long way um, into healing yourself and letting go of those things that would bog you down and hold you down when it comes to love. See, she's awakening. She's awakening to those things that mean something to her now. They're, this is the energy of awakening and seeing and looking, looking like looking at yourself in a different way. Like, like, uh, yeah, like stronger looking inside of you, um, not in an implosive way, but in like remembering how far you've come and how strong you really are and building up this look to your inner strength. You are stronger than you realize finding that strength that you thought was gone, but it isn't because you realize, oh my God, look how far I've come. I must be stronger than I think. And that's where you're starting to, I think, find more confidence to let go of those things that you used to put all your faith in that were outside of you. And you're more like, I don't need them. I'm, I've got everything I need and it's right here. If you are curious about who is coming towards you or um, what your partner's feelings may be like, please do click the link below. It's in the comment section too. And I'll see you in the extended. Sagittarius, this is your romance reading uh, for this weekend and, and next week coming up. So let's get right into it. Sagittarius, Balance spirituality, hold on, I just want to be sure, that, yeah, balance spirituality and practicality, full moon in Pisces, hmm, well now we have a new moon in Pisces and we're actually doing this reading on the new moon, so this is definitely about make, letting something go in order to make room for the new because something new wants to come into you. Balance spirituality and practicality. There's that constant contradiction with this Piscean energy. And I can feel that somehow you have felt this contradiction and this need to readjust and recalibrate, almost recalibrate. You know, ever, ever see that like on your cell phone, you have to go like this or in your car, you have to drive in circles. That's kind of what this is. It's like getting into a recalibration stage because there has been something that has been out of balance. Maybe everything that you that you hold as true, your ideals, what you always thought that you wanted, but is it practical? Is it something that is actually working for you? So that question is really strong when it comes to couples is every are your expectations something that can actually be lived up to or is are they out of whack and they actually they're the they're the things that are making you more miserable than your actual spouse or your partner is you know because it could just be these ideals that we hold in our head or constantly looking outside of the relationship and, and what we want or what we think other people have compares comparing them to idyllic situations that we don't know enough about to really make those comparisons this is just are your expectations the things that are causing you the problem right it may not be your partner and if it is your partner then what is it when you, we recalibrate especially within a relationship when we recalibrate we figure what's making us happy and what's making us not and when we see that something isn't making us happy now let's say why why isn't it making us happy like what is it that's causing me to feel discomfort or 
or like I like I don't want to be here anymore or 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 any kind of emotion like that to get that meter back to happy give yourself honest answers and then think practically well what can I do about it right that's that's the answer to your solution is well what can I do about it you know in some extreme uh, uh, situations you know do I need to if do I not like being single anymore and and yet I'm every time I go to these clubs or these bars I'm not meeting everybody anybody do I have to go to different bars do I have to not go to bars at all do I have to go to some sort of um you know meetup group or hiking group or do I have to like you know do do something else to meet people that I would actually be interested in like where is my happiness gauge right now and how can I practically get like really tangibly do things in the 3d to influence getting me back to happy and getting me results that I actually like if this is something inside of a partnership then you're being asked okay well what's making me what's is my is my happiness meter here is it is it off the charts am I if, if it's off the charts you're probably not even listening to this reading but it, is it is it is it being thrown off somehow and what is throwing it off do i need to talk to my partner about something do i need to get rid of my expectations because are the expectations the problem and not my partner like has have they really changed or have my expectations just changed and then what can i do about what can i do about that or um like I said, it, it has your partner changed? How, are they not pulling their weight? Do you want to talk to them about something? Is something a, like, are you close, this close to like the, the straw that broke the camel's back? Well, your happiness, if you're not happy, you'll feel it. And then you'll think, well, where is that itch coming from? Where is that discomfort coming from? Let me be honest with myself. Let me be true. Let me like get some time alone and say to myself, hey, uh, this is what I want to do. Is this practical? Would this help out the situation or would this hurt us and hurt me and and do something that eventually I would I will not end up good for me? Um, are you fantasizing if you're single or if you're with somebody else? Are you or if you're with somebody, are you fantasizing about somebody outside of your relationship? Are you fantasizing about somebody that like somebody that you want somebody? Maybe maybe it's a Pisces. But if you're curious about who's coming towards you, Sagittarius, we're definitely going to go into that. That link is below. Um, but, you know, maybe it's just this energy of um, welcoming somebody into your life that actually helps you balance out practicality and spirituality. Maybe you've just met somebody that actually helps you stabilize yourself and balance yourself in ways that you never thought possible. So that's possible too. Um, it's just that there is this, there's almost like a de demanding tranquility and figuring out what it's going to take for you to get to a tranquil place and be, be happy, be back to that state of, no, I feel really, really good here because there's something a little bit off in terms of, um, you know, um, in terms of your partnership with the spiritual and the practical, like um, not just ideal versus real. I, and I don't want to squish it down to that, but it's, it's like, um, are you and your partner even on par when it comes to what you believe? Like, have you met somebody that is extremely attractive to you, which is practical, but spiritually you just don't gel because you have very, very different points of view and perspectives, not just politically, but maybe even religiously. Have you, have, do you find that you're clashing with their sense of how they connect to the higher power or even if they believe in it at all? Maybe you're thinking about getting married to somebody that really works well in your life, but now you're realizing we come from two totally different backgrounds and we just we don't even feel the same way about things that are really important to me. So those are things that you're going to recognize and that are going to come to the surface this coming week and issues that could be blessings as long as you use them to help you get back to a, just help you get back to a place of happiness, acknowledge that they exist and use them to help you. Okay, well, what do I really have to do to get back to a place where I really feel good as opposed to the place that I'm sort of maybe trying to make myself be in because it should, I want it to work, but what if it's not working? And this doesn't mean you're breaking up with somebody. It means that all of those issues are really coming to the surface, really coming to a head right now to 
incite you doing something about them. And whatever it is you do about them, I'm just hoping that it is going to bring you closer to that state of happy and balanced again. Um, two more cards come out for you. Um, oh, listen and talk to each other. Spend quality time together. And then miracles and blessings are endless. Everything has its gifts. I understand why you feel like things are out of balance and maybe why there's tension in your relationship now. You're not spending the kind of, maybe you're not spending the kind of money you used to spend on each other. You're not spending the kind of quality time you used to spend on each other. And Sagittarius, maybe you spent too much time single if you are not in a partnership, but this is definitely feeling emptied. And that's why the spiritual and the practical are out of whack because there isn't that actual skin to skin, person to person options coming in for singles. It's like feeling alone, feeling unbalanced, feeling or feeling like the, the people that you do spend time with aren't quality and that you're not gelling with anybody. So there is definitely an imbalance here that needs to be made right and if you're in a partnership this is this i think is this is a little bit less tricky than if you're single because if you're in a partnership and you're with somebody that you love the tensions that are building a hundred percent they have to do with the fact that there's just been a lack of you two being able to spend time with each other for whatever it is you could have somebody in your life that you have to take care of and you haven't been able to spend enough time you know focusing on your your spouse or your partner um, it could be work stress. It could be money related. The two of you aren't doing enough. You're not going out the way that you used to. You're not having fun the way that you used to. You're not looking forward to seeing each other anymore because it's all just burdened and dried up and, and kind of, and it's not that you hate each other. That's not what I'm feeling, but I am feeling the tension that's building. And it's because you need this time together again. You need this quality time and you need to start spending money and giving each other gifts and showing each other affection again there has to be physicality it almost seems like maybe in extreme cases the physical has dried up and at least one of you is really worried about it you miss that sex you miss that sexual connection you know that shows love to each other because these two are lip locking so it doesn't even have to be actually being sexually intimate as much as it is about just being intimate, physically intimate, kissing each other, holding each other, cuddling, like rubbing each other's back, touching each other's face, patting each other's bottom, those kind of things that you give to each other for some reason, and it's probably stress and maybe financial issues are draining you and they're bringing your attention elsewhere. And that's going to really cause a huge issue in your relationship. And that's what's causing the huge issues in your relationship. So those are things that you can actually start changing right now. Like, like that you can actually start doing something about it as, as I speak, you can turn this video off and go give your partner a little hug or a little tap on the bottom or a little wink that says, Hey, why don't you come in the bathroom? I'm going to turn this off and we can just like come into the bedroom and, you know, let's, you know, you can start working on that now or, Hey, you know what? I know we can't afford much, but at least let's go out to Starbucks and buy each other coffee and get out of the house. Like something like you can start to do something about it right now. If this has to do with you being single, it's really a lot more difficult, isn't it? Because it's like, okay, well, if I'm not meeting the people the way that I'm, or maybe you haven't been trying to meet people and now is the time to start. Of course, in Mercury retrograde, you're not going to meet anybody that is going to go long term and you don't have to. It's just starting to get you like retrogrades are a good time to not expect something fast to happen to basically get your training wheels out and take the time to learn your balance. That's what you're doing, like getting your training wheels out and taking your time to learn your balance, Sag. So yeah, you know, maybe, maybe like this Friday night, instead of staying home, go out, like just try something, try it, try it more, try a, a new circumstance or situation, try a new bar or try a new hangout or try a new activity. Um, but maybe just take those baby steps, move really slow, especially during your retrograde is a perfect time to move really slow, okay? So it's actually a perfect time to sort of engage in something new as long as you have no expectations for it and you know I'm just trying to get my sea legs on here, okay? Um, or if what's not working for you, then reassess it, let it go, switch it out, like uh, allow, allow the, Allow the failure to be acknowledged of whatever is not working so that you can then go ahead and try something different and to try to fix it, you know, and, and then let things happen slowly. Um, give, you'll have plenty of time to get, have 
Ooh, I'm so sorry. You'll have plenty of time to get those sea legs back underneath you, Sag. Now, if you're curious about who is coming towards you or how your partner is feeling, um, any kind of conflicts that they may be having, that link is below and it's in the comment section as well. And I'll see you over in the extended. Hey, Capricorn. Okay, Capricorn, let's, let's get right into your reading. Um, who was Capricorn? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just, hold on. Okay, got that worked out. Just had a little card snafu. So two cards came out for you. And normally I don't, Capricorn, normally I don't allow two cards, just to let you know. Um, but they came out. And I, I, I trust what the messages pop out as, all right? I'm just going to give it up to faith. So it's time to take action, new moon in Aries. So this is you going out and actively seeking and doing and making a decision to bring something into your life. A personal issue reaches resolution, full moon in Cancer. This is emotional healing nurturing yourself and a finally letting go of an old cycle or an old set of feelings or emotions that usually have to do with an old relationship because cancers hold on particularly long to relationships so this is just like letting that shedding that skin almost giving yourself molting your shell right? And giving yourself that release of that old energy and that old cycle, just letting it, letting it go, right? And feeling the healing, feeling it to heal it. Like, and, and really it's, it's resolved like a, a, a solution, like a, there's an issue that is resolving in your life and you're the one that is doing the work to welcome it in. It's like you're finally ready, if I could read these cards together, you're finally ready to let go of a circumstance that hurt you a great deal. So to let go of a to let go of a relationship or a situation or a fight or an argument, whether you're single or a part of a couple, you're finally ready to let go of something that caused you a great deal of pain and made you suffer a lot. If you have broken up from a situation, you might be actually getting a chance to see this person again, talk to this person again, hear from them again. You may give yourself the, and you may, you may find that you're finally over them, that that is something that you never expected, but that all of a sudden those old things don't really matter much anymore. They don't feel the same way that they used to. Um, there's a lot of releasing energy going on here to heal. You know, feel it to heal it, bringing something up to the surface. But for you, I feel like it's an opportunity to bring back something that you felt in the past or, or like put yourself back into a circumstance or a situation that makes you confront the past or finally al allows you to confront the past so that you can move on for, from it. You're about to get healed. You're about to get released from really stressful energy, energy that hurt you I just feel like a great deal of hurt here. Maybe there was disappointment um, or maybe there was like even conflict about um, sexuality, not being able to perform or want to perform or some sort of sexual desire. You lost sexual desire of some sort. Well, it's coming back. There's, there's something that has been smoothed out and released there's like the floodgates have been released and there's a resolution to really not get in any type of energy. So you could have a lot of options or an opportunity for, you know, um, to come back into your life, um, which is really wonderful. And that could actually help your relationship too. If you've been having some sort of relationship issues, you got the ram back in the bed, baby. This is an Aries energy is definitely Mars energy and Mars is actually in Capricorn right now. So it's going to really invigorate that motion to work, motion to do again, reinvigoration is going to bring it back. You're going to get like a new a new lease on life in that area. So you know what? 
enjoy yourself <laughs> let it take let it let it take you over let it wash over you you are definitely getting out of a situation that impeded you okay um so that's really good news what do i see over here the un a union of hearts a, a love connection defies explanation so resolving this issue is actually going to help you bring you closer bring you closer to someone or bring you closer to finding someone that is like your soulmate this is soulmate energy like this is definitely energy that you should be totally psyched about because um <laughs> um it's almost like you had to grow up to grow together like think about two little seeds in the ground they can't see each other they're just growing their roots first and maybe subliminally their roots start to entwine, but they haven't actually met in the sunlight yet. And now they grow up and they're coming up and they're growing up, but they needed to grow up a bit. They needed to find themselves before they found each other in the sunlight. But this is almost suggestive of the roots are already curled around each other. So if you have been feeling like you are connected to somebody, or if you have been feeling like like psychically connected the psychic connections with people are going to be extremely heightened during this period so trust them trust them in ways that you wouldn't normally trust them because that's that's the beautiful energy of piscean communication is it can or actually circumnavigate the mercury retrograde it can if psychically if you trust your intuition you can actually feel your partner coming in or connect with them that way and that you have access to it you know dig it down in those roots and flesh out those roots which is very earthy energy and picture yourself maybe even picture yourself um connecting to the underground water connecting your roots to water underground and to roots that are next to you and, and entwining in each other and then calling each other in to try to find each other in the daylight this is you're about to this is you're going to you have found all the healing and resolved what needed to be what needed to be resolved in order to come together or come together with your person and finally find your person so this is this is good juju man any way you wrap it, Capricorn, this is, um, this is, un this is, <laughs> this is nice energy to have when it comes to love and romance. If you are curious about who is coming towards you or how your partner is feeling and what's going on with your partner. And like I said, this could actually mean intimacy is coming back into you and your partner's love life, or that you're about to get intimate with somebody because there's a definite physical closeness and physical entwining here so that's really wonderful even if you don't expect it it could be coming into your life sooner than later capricorn and that's after a time and that's because you let go understand that it was it, you were finally able to resolve that situation that was causing you pain or suffering and impeding you you were finally able to let that go and now you're actually able to experience tangibly this is very rooted energy i don't know if you're in a relationship with another earth sign but once again that's for who is coming towards you if you're curious about that energy that link is below in the extended hopefully i'll see you there um but it's definitely tangible is what I'm saying. It's not that, that it's going to go from something that is underground and you can feel and, and use that as a way to connect. You'll be able to actually tangibly touch each other again. And that can be, like I said, for couples, heat coming back into your relationship, sensuality coming back into your relationship, physicality coming back into your relationship. And actually using that as a means to heal the two of you and help to heal uh sagittarius got an interesting and very similar energy i don't know if you're dealing with a sagittarius well uh, whatever whatever that is it, this is the energy of um finally being able to feel the sunlight on your face and feel that connection with another partner because you've resolved issues that were impeding your progress in those areas so whoa all right capricorn i do hope to see you in the extended hi aquarius okay so this is your love reading for both singles and couples if you uh are curious about who is coming towards you or what issues that the person you're dealing with might be going through that link is below that's the extended video and i hope to see you over there so aquarius your love reading says this 
A time to give rather than take and prosperity lies ahead. New moon in Taurus, new moon in Virgo. Earth energy for an air sign. So this is tapping into the earth energy, especially during Piscean season is just to trust, to feel stability inside yourself instead of um, basically relying on it from somebody else and to actually find a way to still feel stable even if you are underwater or feeling kind of heavier than you normally would as an air sign, this is feel that stability and, and maybe you just feel it through faith or maybe you feel it through connection and through grounding to the earth or maybe you feel it through connection by grounding yourself in things that you love to do. Either way, you're finding a way through what could be a very uncomfortable time for you. Um, a time to give rather than take and prosperity lies ahead. I don't know if you're dealing with a Virgo or a Taurus, um, but who's coming towards you? That's the link below. That's the extended information. Um, but this is, I don't know if you're dealing with earth energy, but this is about almost like putting somebody ahead of you, putting some, putting somebody's needs before your own is going to get you so far this week. And it's probably because Aquarius, um, if you normally have pro issues expressing any kind of tenderness or, or vulnerable feelings, um, thinking about them and wanting to do what's right for them and wanting to make them happy or feel good could actually break down that wall. It could actually make you sort of expose yourself when you weren't even thinking about exposing yourself. So it's not like going up, and I don't mean really expose yourself. I mean like, it's not even like going up to somebody and saying, hey, I love you. And I feel like we had this conversation last week too. But it's not like going up to somebody and saying, hey, guess what, I love you. It's not like that. It's just about saying, let me help you. And if, wanting to help them or or putting their needs before your own no stop i will come and pick you up it's not a problem i'll drive you wherever you need to go so like if that gives your little secret away that you actually care about somebody or that you're thinking about somebody well guess what that's going to get you really really far because you're not going to have to just just show it and leave yourself vulnerable but at the same time you're prioritizing caring about them and caring for them and nurturing them over keeping yourself safe, right? And that's going to get you so far. And it could be your secret conduit into where you really want to be because you may find it impossible to sort of just expose yourself and how psyched you are about somebody. So you would shut down in that area. You don't, you don't want to let them see that you're vulnerable for them, but what if they need help? What if they actually need some care or some guidance or some advice or just a friend? You could do that. You're caring enough. You care about me. Aquarius essentially at heart is hum the humanitarian of the Zodiac. You care about, usually this is large groups, making large groups of people happy, but you can now care about making them happy. You know, it's like treat them like they're a large group, like do something for them or volunteer with them, you know, go if like, yeah, volunteer with them. Like if they're into a charity or something, be like, then that's really interesting to me. Maybe I'll come with you this weekend to feed, feed the homeless or work at the shelter. Um, something like that will actually spur their heart and make them realize something about you that they never realized before. And that's, this could be for long-term partnerships as well. This could be your way, your sort of subverted way to break those emotions, break through that barrier and basically share those emotions without really sharing those emotions. So care to show you care. It's not about, yeah, sharing is caring. Sharing with, sharing with them, sharing your time, sharing your wisdom, sharing your knowledge, sharing your resources will really help you connect with somebody this coming weekend. Um, yeah, and it's wonderful because you don't have to worry about sort of laying your heart or wearing your heart on your sleeve. You don't have to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, but it will almost, it's like, Putting yourself in this situation will act in the situation of, of giving will actually speak the words that you may not want to speak yet or 
or say what you need to say for you without you having to completely and totally own that you actually feel that way. But guess what? You're here and you showed up, didn't you? And they're going to be really happy to see you. I'm just letting you know that right now. Time to give rather than take and prosperity lies ahead. This is very, very grounded energy, which means it, it could have long-term potential, right? Especially if you allow it to move very slowly because Virgos and Capricorns aren't usually in it for long-term. Let's look what's over here. Ooh, two things. Uh, what did I say? Wow. So be authentic, be real and true to who you are and how you feel. Be goofy you, be impractical you, be a, uh, you know, alien hat you, be who you are out loud, but in full capacity. Don't, not like in a demonstrative way of like, here's my freakiness. Uh, you know, that's almost like a protectiveness for you. Don't just be who you are. And if you're really concerned and you really care about somebody, show it. Like I said, you don't have to go up to them and like ask them on the first date or say, Hey, did you know how much I dream about you every night? No, but be authentic. It's like you care. If you really care about them and you see them crying, pat them on the shoulder, go up. Do you need to talk or just wrap your arms around them and hug them? It's not about you. It's about them. And it's about, hey, if you really care about them, show them that you really care about them. You don't have to reveal your innermost secrets or your deepest emotions for them, but just show that you care about them. Be authentic, authentic, emotionally authentic, right? And then express loves through gifts. A small token of love can convey great appreciation. Same thing. Now, some of you could be asking somebody to be your lawfully wedded husband or like get engaged because this is my engagement card. But this is also the energy of do. Use your tangible gifts, especially with Taurus because Taurus is all kinds of intellectual. Okay. So use your tangible gifts to show that you care for somebody. Maybe you're buying them something. You're giving them a gift. It'll make their heart glow it'll make their eyes light up and it'll let them know what maybe you're not ready to say yet which is of course you're special to me idiot of course you are it's gonna go a long way i'm telling you to heal and this could be for couples too it's not just for somebody new or a new situation or a, a situation that's kind of sort of taken off but it's a little bit ambiguous this could be for couples as well is that just bringing home a, you know, a little diamond ring or a new set of diamond earrings or um, baseball tickets or, you know, whatever, wherever they like, just show them and express your love by not even, you don't have to say that you love, just express your love and show your love and gifts is a really good way. It'll go a long way this week. Or this could be somebody, this could be vice versa too. Of course, this could be somebody giving you gifts as well. Either way, there's going to be an expression of love here, not through words. And that's good because when Mercury is in retrograde, words don't work out. Okay. Even things like, like you could have misinterpreted what somebody said because of the retrograde. It's like communications are wonky. So forget about those kind of communications and just show and do to demonstrate that you actually care. Because sometimes, show every time, showing that you care is so much more special than saying I love you. It's more than word. Hashtag more than words, Aquarius. More than words. Going to go a long way. And yes... I have that freaking song in my head now, and I'm sure you do too. Hopefully, I will see you guys over the in, in the extended if you're curious about where your partner's head is at or who is coming towards you. I'll see you over there. Pisces. All right, Pisces. Let's get into your energy. Whoo. Pisces. Two cards come here. Mm. Now... I usually only pick one card, but if two cards fell out, they fell out. And I'm not going to ask any darn questions. So Pisces, what these means is confidence is your key to success and emotions are running high. Okay, it makes sense, right? Emotions are running extremely high, especially with the new moon ready, this immense energy just ready to let new things in your life or start new things in your life and, and, and believe in those new things in your life and believe in those dreams and believe in your manifestation power. You have so much energy here, so much belief in what you are, so much confidence really that maybe you normally don't have. 
And so it makes sense that that would translate into your love life. Feeling something so intensely for somebody, whether it's anger or hate or disappointment, this is like raw, un untethered emotion. Maybe it's happiness. Maybe it's joy. Maybe it's, oh my God, this is the best sex I've ever had. You know what I'm saying? Like, but any, everything is going to be extremely intense this week. Why? Because it's all coming through your own experience. It's coming through your sense of self and you are extremely heightened this week. So understand that number one, that a lot of what you're feeling might not necessarily have to do with your partner, but just how intense and high on life or high on energy you are right now, wanting to get things done, feeling and believing in yourself and seeing opportunities coming in for you that can give you a lot of great confidence. And so use that confidence and go after it and express those emotions and express all that you are but know that it has more to do with you Pisces than it does with them and that's where the retrograde can get you that's where the energy of intensely feeling so good about other aspects of your life that you kind of mistake that for your partner or loving them before you even know them or um, being extremely angry with them when maybe what they did wasn't so bad something to that effect is that yes everything in your life i think things in your life are going really really well a really beautiful season for you right but just understand that because that beauty may sort of be something you reflect onto somebody who is not as beautiful if you know your eyes weren't sort of kaleidoscope eyes right now now um understand that this is a wonderful time in terms of feeling and in terms of emotion and these emotions will definitely inspire you to create great things and do great things and actually have confidence um you might be making connections through romance you may you might be entertaining somebody bringing them back to the bedroom after you met them at a business meeting there could be some like i said warning signs in terms of mixing business with pleasure that's the kind of thing that I want you to be very, very wary of because this is just such a burning, like hot flow lava time for you. Like you are really capable of creating some beautiful, beautiful new things. When it comes to your romance, it could very well be something that is hot and passionate right now, but will not stay or go the distance in the future and that's good news if you're fighting with your partner and you're mad at them in that this will eventually see i don't know if you're dealing with a leo maybe you're dealing with a leo um maybe they're they're really feeling extra passionate or you've noticed that your partner is being extra amorous toward you um or they're just they're let them they just want to be all over you all the time right now there's that makes sense because there's definitely that sort of magnetic energy that you're producing right now, that attractiveness, that allure that's all around you because people finally get you. You're not, in, you're not the odd duck anymore. Even if you are, it doesn't matter because they're finally vibing. So it's like, cool. You could be very, very attractive, attracting a lot of people this week and feeling really, really good about yourself not just because of it, but attracting people because you feel so confident and good about yourself. So this is really wonderful energy this week for you. Um, but just understand that just please like live in the moment and don't let it necessarily don't expect long term anything. Just live in this beautiful high energy moment and let it inspire you outside of love and romance as well. This is definitely that feeling of um Express your emotions, show your emotions. Um, confidence is key. To success, I keep hearing that. Confidence is the key to success. So if you're, if you're getting the feels majorly for somebody, if you're, if you're feeling them big time, this could very well mean that it's you that has to initiate the connection between the two of you. That it's you that has to be, let's just make the first move, go up, go up and talk to them first, go on, like just, or believe it when they say it to you. Don't doubt it. You know, you may think, oh, what is this person? They're so good looking. There's no way that you'd ever notice me. Be confident. Confidence is the key to, um, confidence is the key to everything this week. Yes, you're feeling, you're like, yeah, believe in their feelings and what you're feeling. Believe in what you're feeling. I think it's what I'm trying to say in a long-winded way. Believe in all that you're feeling. Follow it, consciously dignify it, and validate it. 
immediately. And believe that somebody else could be attracted to you too. Yes, they do mean it. Yes, they are feeling you. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Believe in it. Believe in those emotions. I, I know like your, in other words, your brain might get in the way of what your feelings are feeling this week just because of sort of some sort of self-doubt, Pisces. Believe in your feelings. Have confidence in your emotions. They are really, really full. They are really, really about to pop. And everybody's washed away in them. So absolutely, 100%, um, have confidence in what you're feeling this week. Mm. Um, two more cards for you? Yep. Pick it from the wrong pile. Two more cards for you. Treasure your loved ones. It is important to love others deeply. This is divine feminine energy, but it's flipped upside down. And this is be supportive. Make a genuine effort to show you care. Hmm. Both of these cards are coming upside down. Hold on. Okay, so this is more Sagittarius energy and more uh, water, uh, divine feminine energy. Um, I honestly feel like a lot of people are going to be taking aim at you. I think that you're going to be extremely popular and the bell at the ball. Um, there's just a lot of, like I said, magnetism around you right now and a lot of people wanting your attention or wanting your affection and definitely wanting your sexuality and sensuality and physicality. Um, you are not necessarily going to be the one doing the supporting this week. It's going to be everybody sort of coming to you, being drawn to you, absorbing them to you and them wanting to just sort of like be wrapped in everything that you are, Pisces. Um... Yeah, this is definitely the energy of um, letting it spill. I just saw two hands together holding water and then just letting it spill. Letting it all spill out. This is a very sensual week for you. Letting it all go. I don't even think that you're going to be completely caught up with will this feeling last. You just want to feel it while it's here. And I definitely agree with that mentality feel it while it's here. Um, I feel great joy coming from you. I feel great, um, almost like a high, almost, yeah, like you're on a high, but that's what I want to warn you. And you, you got to forgive the Cancerian in me. Those highs are always followed by great lows, but that doesn't mean you can't not feel it. Right? So you just have to, you just have to feel this and somewhere back in your consciousness. No, um, that this is more about you than it is about them. This is more about your journey and where your life is headed than taking a partner with you or anything that they could do for you, making you feel as good as your energy is making you feel right now. It's your energy that's making you feel good. That's your, it's your energy that's attracting people to you. You understand? And I think on some level, you know that. And I love that you know that because you need to know that. So that you give credit where credit is due and that's credit to yourself and not to them. And that's not like outwardly holding yourself back from them. Let them enjoy you. Enjoy them too. It could actually help to strengthen your bond, their bond to you. To just let them get washed away in you, right? But after the, the wash is over and the water drains or recedes, you're still going to have you. If you give yourself the credit where the credit is due. And that's really what I want for you. If you're curious about who you're dealing with or who's coming towards you or what emotions your partner is feeling, that link is in the description box below. It's in the extended. I'll see you over there. Aries, here we go. What do you need to release? Waning moon. Is it emotions? Is it fears? Is it sadness? Is it a relationship? Is it a job? Is it work? What do you need to release? This is a good question for you. And it's a good time to do it because all these waves and this Piscean energy will just wash it all away. You're getting prepared, waning moon. You're getting prepared. You're almost at a waning crescent. You're getting prepared for the new moon. So even though we're in a new moon tonight, right now, we're in a new moon. Um, 
there's something there that's impeding newness coming into your life or impeding that new beginning that you really wanted to start. And whatever it is, you got to let it go. What is it? Let it go into the ether, release it. You're just this close to being ready for the new moon, but you're not ready. So you're this close to being ready for that new stuff, but you're not ready yet. You want to be ready. It may have even presented itself to you. This is the kind of energy of somebody asking you to marry them, but you're still married. You're still angry deep down inside that they cheated on you two years ago and you stayed with them and you've resolved it and they've been faithful ever since but you still haven't let go of that disappointment and that worry that, hey, I just learned something about them that I don't like. But you held on and you stayed in the relationship, but you still haven't confronted it. or Like that's the kind of energy. Something that you think you moved on from a long time ago, but it's still there. You haven't really moved on from it. And that's what I want you to face. And that's what I want you to feel. And that's what it, that's what Pisces season is going to be bringing up to you and let you know why is it doing it to you? They don't do it to hurt you or harm you. They're doing it because, hey, hello, Aries, you are here in this beautiful Piscean new moon, but your cup is still kind of like, it's still got mud in it, right? I mean, sure, you could pour new stuff on top of it, but it would be get, get muddied by what still hasn't been sludged out or rinsed out. So this is the energy Aries of you having to rinse out your cup, have to finish out and get rid of that last bit of sludge. Just take it out, take it out. Yes, even if it means getting rid of the relationship or if it just means like yelling and screaming and saying what you feel or if it, if it means um, sort of releasing that fear that used to be in the past so that you can be fully engaged and believe in this love that you have now. Whatever it is, there's little bits and pieces still left in that cup taking up space that you really don't want to sully or muddy the water or the newness that you want to fill that cup with. It's ready. It's there. And you have a lot of space that needs to be filled. And it's almost like you're keeping that empty too because you know on some level, you know there's still mud in this in this goblet and you don't want anything new to get in there and get it all muddied. Well, this is the time for you to like wash it out in Pisces season. Like let the season cleanse that muddiness and clean out the cup, get rid of it and carry it away so that your cup is pristine and wide open and ready to be filled up without you having to worry about muddying it ever again. Ooh, practice compassion. See things from a new perspective, okay? This is about forgiveness, resolving some old issues. Like I said, resolving old issues, cleaning it out. First of all, having compassion for yourself, absolutely. Um, allowing yourself to take the time to step back, go back. Don't judge yourself for still feeling on to ho holding on to something that even if it happened 10 years ago, it doesn't matter. Don't judge yourself for those feelings still being there. Please be compassionate with number one, you, okay? Don't judge yourself or call yourself ridiculous or hate yourself or get angry at yourself. Why do I still feel these things for this person that was so bad to me? Why haven't I let this go? I don't want you to do that to yourself. Have compassion with yourself and say, wow, clearly this still bothers me. Let me think about it. How do I help myself? You, number one, numero uno, Aries, you have got to allow this Piscean season to heal you and clear you out. And the number one person that can get in the way of that is you when you're not being compassionate enough to yourself to forgive whatever you need to forgive or to accept that you have these feelings. Don't ridicule yourself or judge yourself. Just think, what do I need to do to heal myself? And then the flip side of that is your partner. Maybe it's your partner. Maybe it's an ex-partner. Maybe it's a partner from years ago that left this mud in your cup. Compassion. Not, yeah, forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is cutting the ties, is clearing out the cup. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not saying that what they did to you is okay. That's not what it is. Forgiveness is making sure that it doesn't have control over you anymore. And clearly something from the past still has a, a, a hook in you, some ties in you, something that you have not been able to let go or, or, or let, let yourself get past. Well, guess what? The time is now. You're going to feel it to heal it. And you know what, Aries? 
on some level, I think you're really, really happy about it because you've known that this is impeding you. Maybe it's impeding your relationship. Maybe it's kept you from saying yes to the dress. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's somehow it's kept you back or made you pause. Maybe you're married, right? Um, and there are some issues in terms of how your partner deals with money or something, and you've never gone over it with them, but you haven't been wanting to buy a house because um, ultimately, um, you know, you're worried about that extra financial burden with this worry that you've never actually shared with your partner. Well, guess what? Now it's time to share it with your partner. Not to be aggressive, not to yell, not to scream, but to say, this is what I'm really feeling. Please let's work this out. Let's let's talk about it. It's talking and listening. This is very Virgo energy. So nurturing through communication. Now I know communication can be really wonky during a Mercury retrograde. So maybe it's more um, first you start with what? You start with letting yourself just feel it. Letting yourself accept that there is an issue and figure out where the issue lies. And you know what? Just really accepting that because this is next week's energy, right? So then we only have about another week, week and a half of the retrograde. You can then take the time to say, plan out, how am I going to speak to my partner about this once um, Mercury goes direct again? You know what I'm saying? It's like, or, or you can just learn how to talk to them in a way that's much more emotional, much more intuitive, hear them out, hear what they have to say. Um, it's not, it's, it, it's more about speaking through feelings, allowing yourself to feel what you need to feel, write it down, maybe even journal it Aries and say, okay, so this is definitely what I'm feeling and clearly this is still bothering me. And then in that journal, start to work out some concepts or maybe some scenarios or ideas of how the two of you can work on this together, right? You don't have to be ready to talk to them about it right now, but if they do come to you and say something to you, then have compassion for them. And most certainly if emotions come up, have compassion for yourself. If you're interested, um, in who's coming towards you or how your partner is feeling, what they're, you know, like, like what's on their mind, their, their sort of, their situ, their emotional right now, <laughs> that link is below. And hopefully I will see you guys over in the extended. Taurus. All right, let's go Taurus. Let's see what your energy is. It's time to release negative energy. And I feel like this has more to do with how you feel about yourself how you feel about who you are as a partner. Um, and maybe even, yeah, it's it's more that than it is about hating somebody else or feeling mad about somebody else or wanting revenge, though it could be those two. It's all of those very toxic, very poisonous emotions that we hold on to, that we get fixed with. Um, it's the scorpionic energy of it just hold on to those emotions. Like you, you freeze it in ice. Well, guess what? All this Piscean energy is melting the ice and those toxins are going right into the water to be drifting away. Please allow them to melt and be drifted away. This is of actually very healing energy. It's about accepting what you feel emotionally uh, without judgment, without condemnation. Um, and it's also about recognizing it, recognizing what has hurt you, recognizing um even if it's come from a long time ago, recognizing it or recognizing it if it's toxic for you. Like finally getting wind of, wow, I'm not as happy in this relationship as I thought I was or um, what that person does or that treatment, that, that behavior from that part, I really, it makes me feel really bad. It's like identifying where the toxicity is coming from. Um, ooh, ooh. It's letting things literally fall apart so that you can finally be released of all those chains and prisons and build back up again and start fresh. So this is death and rebirth. That's the cycle. So something may be coming to an end, Taurus, as well. It could be you are letting go of a toxic relationship. Um, doesn't, yeah. This would be love and romance, but maybe it might be a toxic relationship that's affecting your romance. You know, I just got that image. Like, what if it's an ex that's affecting your current romance and you're happy with your current romance? 
um, but it's affecting those, maybe there's emotions that were left over, or maybe the ex is still there trying to break in somehow, trying to be in the middle of the two of you somehow. It's time to get rid of that, whatever that's impeding, whatever that toxin in is, it's time to get rid of it and get it out of the way of the love that you want to nurture or have for somebody or the room that you want to have to have somebody. It's definitely time to get rid of it. If you've been doing too many drugs and alcohol, also it's time to get rid of that. It's time to purge it. It's time to stop it and stop getting distracted by it because that could actually be impeding you finding somebody that's quality or you finding somebody that you're actually like, like watch out for too much toxicity this coming week, right? Too much, maybe watch out for getting intoxicated and making some bad choices when you've been drinking too much. That kind of energy, this kind of scorpionic um, behaviors, associations with drugs or a lot of um, like so, sort of subverted sexuality or sensuality. If you're getting too heavy into those, it could also muddy muddy how you feel about yourself and your life. So you could need to just basically, essentially this card is calling you to detox, like get that out of your life, get the toxins out of your life, whether they're emotional toxins, tangible chemical toxins, or one or the other, or both. This is the weekend for you to detox and clear that out because it's somehow affecting negatively impacting your romance and your love life could be with your current partner or it could just be with you finding a credible partner a reliable a good partner right you there's something that's clouding it act as if your partner is here whether you have someone in your life or not act as if they are with you so you will always consider them this could be this temptation of this this coming weekend of them being away from you and you really needing their support, you're really missing them and then using maybe drinking too much or using too much, getting too high too much and running into, you know, um, forgetting, the, forgetting that your partner is even here or acting in ways sort of like the hangover. If you ever seen those movies, watch out because this could be hashtag the hangover for you guys coming next weekend. It's like, don't forget that you have a partner, whether they're sitting right there next to you or whether they're not sitting right there next to you. You have a partner even when they're not right there next to you. So watch out for hashtag, watch out for hashtag the hangover because honestly, there could be some temptations coming your way next week that might impede or mess up a really good situation because you let in too many toxins. Also, um, be sure that when you, when you, I was going to say when you speak, even if you're, even if you're not, not tempted to do anything, but watch how you talk or say about them or watch what you're feeling about them as well. Um, there could be this energy of you missing somebody so much, you start to sort of turn that into a negative thing. Like, well, they're never here for me or they should have come on this trip with me. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That is just those super emotions, those toxicities, those toxins coming up. Um, um, and, and honestly, if, if you, let's, well, first of all, if you wouldn't say it to their face, you shouldn't say it to them over the phone in a text or an email. Um, um, but also it's like, just make sure that all the garbage has to do with them before you dump it on them. That's also what I want to say. And this, all of these energies could be vice versa too. Absolutely, Taurus. This could be what you're feeling from your partner as well. Um, it could also be, especially if you're single, having this ideal image image in your mind um, of your partner and that actually being toxic, being basically being lost in your dreams and lost in your fantasies and not seeing how beautiful somebody right in front of you really is and how amazing they could be as a partner, how wonderful they are as a person. Um, basically, um, yeah, getting too, getting too lost in your fantasies and your dreams. And that could like, during Pisces season, that is a downfall, right? That That is a possibility, right? And then not knowing how to navigate your way out of that fog, especially with the scorpionic energy, sort of getting lost in your psyche, getting lost in the other world, getting lost in your dreams, or maybe, maybe even feeling a partner calling to you from that sort of 5D plane and not really knowing or understanding like how to connect with them uh, and on in the 3D plane, um, 
if you're not used to it, I would then definitely go see a healer or connect with somebody that could help you in your specific situation. Um, but this is, I feel more, I feel like it's a more like, there's almost like fantasy getting in the way of um, reality coming in and and the image that you have in, of your partner the fantastical image that you have of the, your ideal person is not it's to it's to help connect you with them in the 3d it's not to keep them from you or satisfy you so much or set your standards so high not that your standards shouldn't be high it's not about high standards or set your standards so specifically that you don't see the possibilities and potentials right in front of you sometimes we block off our own abundance because we've we've put we've 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 injected our expectations into specific qualities or character traits of a person that really don't make any sense it's like they don't have to have blue eyes they could have brown they don't have to be you know a certain height they could be a little shorter or taller they don't have to be like don't Make those particulars what you inject your must have, make your must haves, because that's not, they're not, they're not. Like, I know that they may look that way in your head because, hey, don't we all fantasize about our favorite celebrity in our head, right? But if we really met the person, would we even like them? <laughs> so in other words, let yourself really meet who is in front of you instead of letting that fantasy get in the way of the two of you. If you're curious about who's coming towards you, or about what your partner is going through this week uh, in terms of their emotional state, please do um, tap that link below and go on over to the extended. I'll see you over there, Taurus. Gemini, let's get into this energy for you. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, Gemini, a time for healing. A time for healing this balsamic moon. If you were just put through a ringer, especially, especially in terms of your reputation and what people say about you and how they've been talking about you because of a relationship that you just recently let go of, all of that air is about to be cleared. All of that BS is about to go away. In fact, it may end up on some level turning around and working out for you okay but either way it's going to work out for you because all of that is about to go it's about to be over that never-ending relationship that just would not end or would not go away it's finally going to be gone including how you feel about it not only how you feel about it but how other people look at you or feel about you as well as how you, how they feel about you. So somebody is finally letting you go and allowing you to leave, allowing you to, mm, actually, I'm not really sure that, hold on, a time for healing. No, this has more to do with your internal emotions because I can't totally confirm that your person isn't still going to want to be vindictive or spiteful to you. I wish I could, but I really can't. What I'm sure of is this has to do with your emotions of you not letting it get to you anymore or you not allowing it to qualify you or hurt you or harm you or even the fallout from whatever they put you through. I don't know, honey, if you lost a lot of money in a separation or um, like I said, your reputation was marred or scarred somehow. Either way, it's waning. And I will say this to you. This, this is both good and bad because if bad stuff happened to you because of the breakout, breakout, breakup, um, um, if bad stuff had happened to you because of this breakup, then that bad stuff is starting to wane. It's going to wear out and it's about to be over, which means <sighs> big burden released from your shoulders. But if you got stuff from this breakup that you didn't deserve and you took credit where it wasn't due, then that's also waning too. Whatever illusion was cast upon you when this moon was full, it's about to go away. It's about to drop off and there's going to, there's going to, the, the spotlight is gone. So if you were reveling in this spotlight, it's about to be over. Get ready for the dark. And if your eyes were burning and you were seething and getting fried under this spotlight, 
that's about to end too. Either way, this, this illusion that was being cast on you, whether it affected you good or it affected you bad, it's about to die out. Now, this could also speak to getting involved in a relationship that you were just, oh my God, so caught up in and so like, oh my God, this is so awesome. You're going to start to feel it waning. You're going to start to feel that dying down, simmering down. I don't know if you're in a relationship with a Scorpio. They got a very similar reading as well. You might want to check out their reading. So there's just this energy of this simmering down, this boiling out, maybe losing interest. But for you, it's more permanent. It's not just losing the intensity of the emotion. It's definitely the circumstance itself is dying out. It's shifting out. It's waning. It's fading. And you could be very, very happy about this, Gemini, or you'd be very upset. Either way, that's what's going on. Let's look at, oh, two of these cards for you. Be willing to express love, express love to receive love, and do something for somebody. Give your attention to another. I just got this message. You're, you're finally, you're getting, you're finally able to get into a new relationship after a crazy relationship ended. After a relationship that either carried you away and then left you with nothing, or especially those, those Gemini out there who experienced basically getting, like, having their reputation raped and raked across the coals and dragged through the mud. You're I think there was a long period where you just did not want to in any way, shape, or form be near anybody because you were pretty much done. There was too much for you to handle. Like, it, like you were, you were dodging too many curveballs to even meet somebody new. Well, guess what? Now that everything is dying down and the, um, the pitch, the, 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 the ball throwing machine has broken or it's, or the energy's run out. You're now able to finally welcome in a new partner to your life. You're actually able to like entertain love again, entertain somebody to fall in love with again. You might actually for the first time in a long time be taking an interest in somebody, somebody that's gentle, somebody that's kind, somebody that's compassionate, falling in love with their compassion and the way that they treat others and what they do for others and really falling in love with who they are. I feel like this person would be very, very different than the person you just got out of a horrible situation with if that's true for you. If you are in a very gratifying relationship, this is definitely a time for you to, um, for you to incite healing or whatever has been troubling your relationship or troubling them. Cause you could be like a mom or a solve for their cuts and bruises and scrapes this week, just by listening to them and caring about them and doing things that they didn't expect you to do. Like they didn't ask you to do it, the dishes, but the dishes were done. They didn't ask you to do the laundry, but the, the laundry was done. You know, like little things that they didn't ask you to do, doing things that somebody doesn't ask you to do to help them heal, to take off the pressure from them. Now this could be vice versa too. It could be happening to you as well. So that's a beautiful energy too. It's like, yes, thank you. I will take that breakfast in bed. That kind of energy of just be ready to receive kindness or be able to finally give kindness or feel kindness for the first time in a very long time. Because I do feel like this has been like a long-standing craziness with you. And look at how beautiful that card is. It's actually finally dying down and going away. Now, this may not make you so happy on some levels, especially if it's, you know, that exciting, passionate love that you've always, that you've wanted and, and now it's starting to get boring and you're just like, oh man, I thought this one wouldn't fade. Well, then that would be just pamper yourself this week. Just give yourself that love and compassion and be gentle with who you are, you know, yeah, be gentle with yourself. So that you can basically be okay. Like feel somebody loving you, even if you have to love on yourself. Like, yeah, this is the time. This is the, like next weekend would be the weekend for that. Don't even second guess yourself. Just allow it. Allow that self-care, that time to heal who you are so that you can move on to the next whatever it is. You're not even predicting. You're not even thinking about it kind of energy. But you're definitely, there's definitely some sort of energy here where you're just about to move on. You're ready. You're ready. It's 
really interesting. Um, if you're curious about who you're dealing with, like who is coming towards you um, or who you're dealing with, um, please do click that link below. The who is coming towards you is in the extended below. Uh, I'll see you guys over there. Cancer. Hey guys. So this is your uh, romantic tarot for this coming weekend. If you're curious about this weekend, please do go check that out. It's in the romantic tarot playlist um, already. It was last week's video. Okay, so this is the general reading for couples and singles of romance and the messages that need to come through for you. If you're concerned about who's coming towards you, you really, really, really want to know, that link is below. It could also give you some insight into um, your partner's feelings and what's happening inside of them and what they're struggling with. So that ex that's in the extended and that link is below and in the comment section. So for today... Meditate and contemplate. Oh, wow. New moon in Pisces. Oh, I just got a freaking chill. It is the new moon in Pisces right now. That's what we're in. And this is the card that you draw that I drew for cancers on the new moon in Pisces. The new moon in Pisces card. If that's not synchronicity, I don't know what the it is but cancerians you're being given this message i'm gonna i'm gonna lay it out for you and i'm gonna articulate articulate it for you you are going to manifest what you want in your life right now right here that's what's coming in remember you have such manifestation powers that you do it in your sleep i don't know if you're gonna dream about somebody but if you dream about them they're coming towards you I, i'm guaranteed but what i will say in terms of your manifestations for tonight, write down, be very, very specific and don't lie. Don't hold back and don't be ashamed. Ask for exactly what you want. The universe will know what you mean. If you write down some celebrity's name, go ahead, write it down. Why? Because maybe you're not going to get them, but the universe will be like, I know what they mean when they say that. I know what they mean. They don't really mean that person because I know that that person isn't anything like those things. So that's not who they really want. But I know what they mean when they say that. So like if you're going to write down somebody's name specifically, almost use it as an adjective. You know what I'm saying? Like use it as an adjective, like use it as a descriptor. Don't use it as got to be that one, but use it as descriptive language, Right. That's what you do, but write it down and articulate it because you are going to be tonight manifesting and building with the universe, the love of your life and the person of your dreams. Meditate and contemplate. What is it that you really want before you ask for it? Because you don't want to get stuck with something you don't really want. So really think about what it is you feel inside and be really bold and be willing to articulate what it is that you really, really want. Think about it. This could also mean if you're in a current situation, are you happy with it? Really? Or have you just pretended to be happy with it because that's what we do when we don't want to let go of relationships? Are you really happy? I'm going to ask you again. Are you? Exactly. No, you're probably not really happy, but you haven't been admitting it. So this is the time to get truthful. This is the time to get honest and, and, and really be real about, you don't have to say anything right now to anybody, but you do have to admit it to yourself about, is this what I really want? Am I doing what I really want in my life with my partnerships, with my romance? Um, and let me think on it and think about how I really feel and think about all of those things that I'm going through right now in my relationship right now um, and see what comes in through meditation. See what messages or understandings or clarification can come in when you've cleared your mind of everything else and just really open yourself up not to being stubborn and making a decision about what must be true because really that's just your ego getting in the way of your happiness. You got to get to a place where the ego is gone, stripped down. What is it that I really want? Meditate and contemplate. This is that collective dream, that collective energy. I swear to God, messages are going to come to you. Oh my God. Three cards. 
Nobody else. Nobody else. Three cards came out for you guys. You are limitless, which is the, guess what? Your unicorn is coming in. Maybe finally being able to decipher your unicorn after not seeing it. But this is, you are limitless. You can do anything you choose. So A, these cards are telling you that you have the magic wand. You have the power. Universe is handing the power to you today, Cancerian. They're handing it to you today. Whatever you cast today is definitely coming into your life. Right here, right now. Romance. Romance is coming into your life. This is swimming in the romance, welcoming in this romance, a beautiful romantic energy. Lavish the one you love with personal attention and affection. Show you love, show you care. If you want this love, demonstrate it. But do you really want the person that you're with? Get honest because if you're not honest, you're going to be stuck in it for the next 20 years and then your waters are just going to be intoxicated. Enough of that. This is who do you really want in your life? Because this is actually being able to tangibly touch them. Take them from a dream or just a fantasy and move them into reality, into the 3D, into your real life. Actually be able to be with them and spend time with them. And then rest and relaxation is essential. We all have a fundamental need to take a break. Somebody is coming to you in your dreams tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm basically saying to all the Cancerians, I'm not going to be surprised if your true love and your lover didn't actually come through in your dreams tonight. Sleeping. And there he is. Sending her messages and protecting her as she sleeps. So this is 150% all Cancerians. It's about manifestation. You have the power to manifest this dream come true, to manifest the romance of your dreams, do it while you're sleeping. I said this, I said this in the new moon predictions, right? I said, write down your intentions and put it under your pillowcase. Cancerians, I'm giving this assignment to you again. You must do this. Everybody else, for everybody else, it's just a suggestion for you it's an assignment you have to do this you have to write down exactly what it is that you want from love and you have to wave that magic wand over that paper basically writing it will be that magic wand on that paper and welcome in design that love and then let it come into you in your dreams i am not kidding you i'm wondering i'm wondering who is coming towards you better click that link below because you know I want to know, and I know you want to know. So that's where this information would come. I'm getting strong water sign here, but it could also be, and what did I freaking say? And I put this in your reading just recently. Who is that Aquarius? Who is that unicorn? Because for me, Aquariuses are unicorns. That's what they are. They're air signs. They're mystical. They're magical. Nobody believes they're real. They don't even believe they're real. It's all those things. Who is that unicorn? Could be an Aquarius. I'm getting really strong water signs here. Either way, there is something coming in on the seat of your dreams and you are manifesting your dreams into reality. And if you do it right, you will be able to do it as you sleep, as in just those manifestations coming to you as you dream. This is about faith. This is about psychic connection. I am. I, I just feel... I wonder what our dreams are going to be. What dreams may come, Cancerians? What dreams may come? What dreams will we have tonight? And what will they tell us? I am so curious as to what they are. But beyond that, this is a time, remember, Piscean energy is just not about getting lost in your dreams. It's about believing in your dreams so much that you make those dreams the real world. So your dreams are coming true and you're about to manifest them. You have the power to manifest them. You are in control. You are 150% the master manifesting energy right now. Use it to help either improve your love life, fix your love life, or create your love life. Better get honest with yourself, Cancerians. Better get honest with yourself. Oh my God, I cannot wait to see who is coming toward us. Link is below. I'll see you over there. Leo. Let's start with your reading now. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini. So, of course, Gemini is now kind of struggling from Mercury retrograde. So this is a message to you, Leo. Maybe you don't know how somebody feels about you. Or you've been trying to get through and communicate with somebody, but the communication has been wonky. 
This is an encouragement card to let you know, Leo, those answers are coming. Those clarifications are coming. Those conclusions or those revelations, they're coming. And that lets me know that the person is thinking about you too, that they're understanding on some level at, at least that you guys have got to talk to each other about things, that this is not just something in your head. I mean, I'm sure at this point you're like going mad and trying to get their attention or trying to get some sort of answer from them, Leo. The answers are coming and they know it somehow. They understand on some level. They might not have the words right now, they might not know how to express those things, but those conclusions, those resolutions, they're coming. I don't know if you're dealing with a Gemini. I don't know if you're dealing with sort of a water sign or somebody that some, sometimes has a hard time putting things into words. But either way, those resolutions and conclusions and messages are coming to you. For the most part, I feel like what's coming to you is going to be an admission of, I feel these things for you too. I can't stop thinking about you. Right now, the person is extremely shy. They're extremely worried. They're extremely scared. They don't want to get thrown back into a crazy, tumultuous relationship. Maybe there's complications between the two of you in terms of he said, she said, or maybe you're the best friend, you're their best friend's ex, or like some sort of energy. Like all of those things that have been impeding the two of you being able to get together. Or yeah, let's, let's go with this right now because it's the message that I'm getting the two of you being able to get together, those resolutions are coming. Now, I would not say they're coming next week, but you may start getting little hints, little symbols, little signs and signals next week. Like maybe even little messages of just signs of life are going to start because remember the retrograde, we've been in the retrograde, I think for about a week at this point. Yeah. So when these messages apply, it will be two weeks in. So literally we'll only have a week, a week and a half left to the retrograde and then the shadow period afterward. So you're not going to have that much time to wait for all of these resolutions to come in and they're coming in. You're going to finally be able to hear and understand and comprehend all of those things that have been kept from you. Those little bits and pieces, it's like the twins are coming together and the circumstance is going to come full circle and be whole again actually really good news for you um be in the oh, I love this card this is about synchronicity and timing and this is about timing being on your side what did I say be in the present and dream of the future when we dream everything is possible so tonight keep really close to your dreams I said this for Cancerians too you may be getting some psychic messages maybe if you're psychic you're used to this but if you're not trust in that energy trust in what you're feeling in other words this is telling me you've already you already feel a connection with somebody you already feel that but it hasn't been confirmed well guess what when these energies are really in effect which is starting next weekend synchronicity it's all about timing the messages are going to come to you in the right time you're going to hear from this person just when you need to most and i know maybe you're thinking right now oh my god oh my god oh my god of course i need to hear from them right now i need to hear from them right now i need to hear from them right now no you don't the timing isn't ready yet do you see this almost like suggested yin yang symbol in that energy and that's the energy of maybe opposites attract or two people coming together that are just complete each other, two halves of each other. Um, ooh, that's some strong energy. It could be twin flame energy. Timing is everything. You understand? And the timing is going to be right next week. So if you're getting messages this, this, come, this, this following week, it's probably going to be on that psychic plane, on that 5D vibration. Just follow your intuition or trust it but actual tangible messages and communications are gonna to start to break through little by little starting next weekend. Why? Because that's when everything is aligned. The timing is perfect for you. You will absolutely, this is confirmation, you will absolutely start getting in those messages and receiving that, those clarifications. And I have a feeling that it really is just a matter of time. You might have to wait for this person. You might have to wait for this person to be ready to tell you what they feel or tell you what they want. Even if you're in a long-term relationship with somebody, it could very well be that they won't be able to have words to put together for you until they just may need a little time to work through their feelings and understand their feelings and accept their feelings so that then they can 
articulately, articulately and clearly communicate them to you when the time is right. So trust in this divine timing, especially till after the Mercury retrograde for communications to be able to come back into you because Leo, this is right now about you and them putting your feelings together and understanding your emotions right now and trusting your emotions. And once you trust your emotions, you'll be able to then put them to words. You can't put or articulate what you're feeling um, when you don't understand the emotions or haven't accepted them yourself. So right now it's about accepting what the two of you are feeling for each other, really hashing out what it is intuitively that really makes sense to you and what you really want. And once you get comfortable with those emotions, the words will come. But this is about timing. Take one step at a time. Put one foot in front of another. Don't try to take any leaps or push things because that will confuse things even more and it may even set you back. If you are curious about who this person is, you need confirmation about who this person is. It's like you know it, but you want to hear it. That link is below in the description box below the video as well as the comment section right above the timestamps. I'll see you over there, Leo. Virgo, here we go. This is for couples and singles, your love energies, love, romance, sensuality messages for this coming uh, weekend and into the week after. If you're curious about what's going on with you right now, uh, please do watch again those energies um, in, um, happy birthday, Michelle Sanigate. That was 706. Um, um, that's, uh, watch those videos, watch those, uh, I'm sorry, watch the video that was done, um, that I've already put out. So that would, you would find that in the romantic tarot playlist that, that is on this page and on this channel. Ooh, okay. So yes, Mercury retrograde has been getting to me in terms of my communication. Let's do this Virgo. Let's get into your messages for this week. Um, nothing is yet set in stone, mutable moon. This is also a waning moon. So something coming to a finish or something, oh uh, yeah, something coming to a close. But this is more, hey, you know what? Whatever you think is happening may not actually be happening. Keep your mind as flexible and malleable as possible. Why? Because communications are down, like I had a hard time speaking to you guys. That's mercury energy mercury retrograde energy playing on your energy or playing with your energy and it might very well be a very good thing for things to not be settled or set in stone yet this could be a very good position for you right now why because anything set in stone right now would break would not would not function correctly would not would not ultimately be right for you so this goes for especially communications with your lover or um or finding a partner right now may not feel like and listen if you're in a long-term partnership i'm not saying that it's going to end um that is not true at all um but in terms of somebody that you just met or a relationship that's new maybe you feel really good right now not necessarily putting a label on it or putting too much pressure on it right maybe you're a boyfriend and girlfriend but you don't want to meet the parents yet just let it be, let things hang, let them just be ambiguous and be like water-like, free-flowing right now. Because at this point, there's still a lot of tumultuousness. There's still a lot of shift. There's still a lot of emotions that are up and down. And you know what? That could be very, very exciting. Like, like there's parts, aspects of that that are way cool. But at the same time, is that how you want to live your whole life? It's okay because the storm is going to settle down. That's what this energy is, is the waves aren't going to be this high forever. The sea isn't going to be this tumultuous forever. The emotions aren't going to be this tumultuous forever. We're not going to be in Pisces, Pisces, Pisces season forever. We're not going to be in Mercury retrograde forever. We're going to eventually go to a, go into an energy that's much more stable for you, much feels much more familiar to you. So basically... Um, like use this energy right now for what it's worth and what it's worth can be a lot in that you don't have to make decisions right now, or you don't have to make choices right now, or nobody's expecting anything to stick right now. That's a good thing. In other words, you might have more time. This, for, especially for you guys, 
is a better time to take in information than to share information or make any decisions. So when it comes to you guys and love and your relationships, here, before you make a judgment, get as much information as possible um, and, and kind of hold off on drawing any conclusions be about the information that you compile just because even this information can change, it can shift. So if you're thinking something's wrong or you're worried if somebody's cheating on you, it's not set in stone. There's no confirmation. We can't be sure. If uh, you think somebody likes you or you think they have feelings for you and maybe they do and maybe you've made out a few times, get it. Okay, cool. Enjoy that. Let it be free flowing and passionate right now. But do everything you can to keep yourself from diving head first because you will hit a rock and break your neck. That's that kind of energy is things aren't, things aren't certain. Things are uncertain. And it could very well be you've been feeling, um, you've been feeling the uncertainty and it's been getting to you. You've been worried about your relationship. That's what it could manifest, especially with you guys is worry. Worried about where you're going, where your future is headed, or if your partner has feelings for you the way that you have feelings for them. You almost feel a little bit too much ambiguity in your relationship right now. You want to be happy. You want to be, you want to have things firmly grounded and they're not. So that's why you've been feeling a little bit uncomfortable with this. I'm telling you right now, this is not going to last forever. And I'd be very surprised if it lasts past the next two weeks, but just be certain, but just, just know that. Just take this in as a little piece of your information in this up and down and craziness is going to subside. Turn on your heart light like Neil Diamond's turn on your heart light. This, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, sharing your emotions, turn on your heart light, reflect on a time when you experienced love. So Piscean energy nine, this is the energy of 36, which is nine. Something is coming to a head feeling things, feeling those feelings inside of you. Um, Piscean season is that time when we don't look outward for strength, we look inward. We look inward to what we already know. We look inward to what we've already learned. We look inward to what we've already experienced to get that solace, to get that asylum that we need. So turn on your heart light and let your heart light glow when was the last time you were in love? Remember when you were in love. Now you may remember when you were in love with the person that you're with, right? That will really help ground you. If you're looking for grounding now, grounding during Pisces season doesn't come with hard rock and cornerstones. Pi uh, grounding in Pisces season comes with the memories, the memories and the love you have felt and the, like what you already have inside of you. So remember those times if you're feeling bad about yourself, if you're feeling worried, if you're feeling lost and you need some sort of foundation, then go back, maybe flip through those, those books. You know, you have them, you know, who you have those picture books, you know, you do go back and flip through those, like take a trip down memory lane. This is a wonderful time. That's what retrogrades are for, um, especially during Pisces season. And I think it's telling you, especially when you're in a long-term relationship, Virgo, is if you're feeling restless right now, remember, take those trips down memory lane because that's probably what's actually happening. 10 to 1, your person still absolutely very much does love you. And there's just been such craziness that's gotten in between of you remembering that. So take this time and use it wisely, Virgo, to get back to that place when you remember how they loved you. Remember that feeling of your first dance on your wedding day. You know, remember the feeling of when they asked you to marry them or when you guys decided to get married. Remember that feeling of when you first kissed. Remember that feeling of when you first... Remember that feeling of remember, remember, remember all those things that you have that are already your cornerstones. So you don't have to question them or look for them because guess what? You already have them. They're already inside of you. And that's the place where you're going to find that stability and asylum during the stormy period when your ruling planet is in retrograde. If you are curious about what your partner's experiencing, what they're feeling, or 
who is coming towards you in terms of a relationship, that link, that information is in the extended below and that link is in the description box and the comment section. I'll see you guys over there. Hi Libra. This is your general romance reading. Um, if you're curious about who is coming towards you or like what your partner is feeling, maybe some insight into their psyche, that is in the that information is in the extended video and that link is below. For right now, let's get into the general romance energies for yes, singles and couples. Believe in the impossible, blue moon. Oh. I mean, I, it just says it, believe in the impossible. Now, once again, there's this duality to this energy and a lot of signs have been getting this duality and it's not because I don't want to decide. It's because I have to say it like it is, you know, for whoever's watching most of the time, mo in most of this energy, I feel like the impossible is going to happen. Like what you never believed could actually happen or come to you is coming to you, especially when it comes to singles. Like this energy of maybe you've been single too long. You've been about to give up or even hoping. You've stopped even hoping of uh, um, hoping um, to meet somebody. Because it seems like you're just not interested or you're just not jiving with anybody. Or nobody really like floats your boat or inspires you. Well, guess what, Libra? This person is about to come into your life because the impossible is about to happen. And that kind of mystery and magic and mysticism is... Pisces season. It's primed for those dreams to become reality. And I feel like there's a part of you that very, you know, kind of cranial, um, intellectual part that is the air sign aspect of you has sort of given up on it. Like stop thinking about it or let it go. But part of your heart still wants it. And I feel like those heartstrings will be tugged, especially during this very, um, very watery, very emotional season, right? You'll just, it's almost like, you know, they might, those dreams may be coming back up inside of you to sort of not torment you, but they may be tormenting you, like re making you remember all that you don't have or making you remember all that you want, but don't have. Even if you're in a long-term relationship, this may be your partner finally doing something for you that you, you asked them four years ago. And then, and you just gave up asking them because ultimately you didn't think that they would ever get around. You just sort of gave up on it. This is them actually coming through. This is the impossible happening. Like we're talking about 100% mission completed, mission impossible completed. It's going to happen. Like it's like for couples and for singles. Um, but then there's also this energy of the impossible could happen. If you thought it was impossible for somebody to cheat on you, you might find out that they cheated on you. If you thought it was impossible for somebody to break up with you, they might all of a sudden be breaking up with you. There is an energy of, you, you know, whatever, whatever you disbelieved in, whether it be, it, whether you will, if you were led there by your arrogance and you thought you were above something, you're not be above it. Your bubble is about to pop. I'm telling you right now, your bubble is coming down and it's about to break. If you so are sort of were beneath this and this is coming up, then your bubble has just been released and it's about to fly and float and become real. Okay, so that's sort of the energy. I don't know where you guys are right now. I don't know if your bubble is about to get popped or if your bubble is about to sort of just come into being like your dreams are going to come true, but it depends on what side you're on. But both are both are acceptable answers. Both are real. This is 100% the impossible happening. Um, and I, interesting, I'm just going to say this. What did you first see when you saw this card? Did you see a bubble popping or did you see it rising? That could tell you a lot about your psyche right now and a lot about your situation. Um, take a chance on love. When we love, our lives are changed forever. Oh, yes. So this is the energy of two plus three change, right? 23, my lucky number. Change. A change is on its way. And, and really this, this implies that it's a change for the better, a change for good, a change where you're finding somebody, you're on your road, your road. This is basically the card where two people are traveling alone. They're searching for their, um, their dreams and they're 
like they're making their dreams come true and on the road on that path they meet somebody with the same goals as them and that's how the two of you meet and come together so the impossible may be happening right under your nose that person maybe is closer than you think and about to be entering into your life next week or the week out, like seriously soon now this is somebody that you will go long term with this is somebody that you have the same visions with same outlook on maybe the two of you have been dreaming about similar things and now those dreams are one it's the two of you going the distance and coming together and having evolved into each other are now prepared to meet each other which is why it maybe took so long for them to get here because they were developing and being prepared just like like you were developing and being prepared so know Libra that this is definitely a long-term partner and it's a beautiful relationship it's a it's just like it's just like this person is somebody who will get you this person is somebody who will um, support you you will support them best friends lovers and partners now nah. If you are in a committed long-term relationship, this is about the two of you resolving an issue that was really almost separating you and maybe taking you away from each other, but it's the two of you finally being able to come back together and have a common vision again. Deci maybe you're deciding on a common vision, you're compromising, right? It could be that, or it could just be whatever was getting in the way of the two of you. It's finally clearing out and you can finally be honest with each other and see each other's side of things and bring yourselves back together so that you have a unified vision of the future again. But this is really hopeful, especially for couples, especially for couples. If that pub bubble pops, the bubble pops is almost like the energy that needed to be released and the truth that needed to come out and everything that needed to be spilled so you can work through and clean up the mess and then get on with your business and continue on with each other. When it comes to singles, I don't know, what'd you see? Did you see the pop or did you see the rise? Did you see the possibility? Did you see this as almost like a magic wand shooting out magic and casting out light? This person is coming to you. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, you probably just had like, oh, you know, I'm, it's okay that I'm single. I'm happy single. I'm going to be single. And I know that that's hard for Libras. And it's funny because so many Libras end up single for a very long time if they don't find that person that really just lit up their soul. And that's something that Libras tend to do. Either they hop from one relationship to another, to another, to another, or they spend a long time single or they have that one person that they want to be with more than anything even if they're not single they're in a relationship that is just like you know well oh, it's cool and you know i'm committed but i wish i had you type of thing type of thing libras really need to fall in love completely and totally and this would be that person that you can feel completely and fall completely and totally in love with like absolutely finding that partner like, I'm just saying, this is really beautiful energy. Finding yourself on the path to, on, on the path that and all of a sudden you're walking a path not alone. Like the two of you just happen to come together. Oh, I love that freaking energy. I really, really freaking love that energy. Okay, so. Yeah, so if you have ever, like Libra, I just saw that scene. If you ever seen that movie, uh, P.S. I Love You, um, it, it, it's in one of the flashback scenes where um, she's, I think she's in Ireland and she's just walking the trail by herself, right? Like she's just, she didn't even freaking know. You know what I'm saying? Like she wasn't thinking of meeting anybody. She was lost. She couldn't find her wherever she was going to. And she didn't know what was coming down the same path was actually her fate and her destiny and the love of her life. And I'm sure he didn't know that either. He was just freaking walking somewhere. You know, it's like they were walking that path at the right time in the right place, but they were on that path because they followed their calling or they followed whatever they were living their lives, doing whatever they needed to do that day. And they just ended up <laughs> like me. That's how they got on the right path where they were going to meet each other. So understand that during this next week, keep focused on your goals. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep being who you are and being authentic. Because honestly, that person is right around the corner and they're doing the same thing. If you're curious about who they are, please do click the link below. I will see you in the extended. 
Thank you, especially to whoever watched this whole video, two hour long video, God bless ya. I hope you enjoyed it and I also hope you enjoy the extended. Watch out for the Zodiac release of all the week aheads. They're coming out between Monday and Thursday. All of them will be out. Thank you guys so much. I will see you in the extended. I'll see you over there.